Well, I haven't been looking forward to covering this game. May as well get it over and done with, at least. So, Fear 2 released in February 2009 to mixed reception. While the game itself was pretty good, it didn't live up to expectations set by the original game. It sold well, but due to the decrease in quality, not as many people were excited for a third game. Just over a year later, a third game was announced by Warner Brothers and then delayed twice until it finally released in June 2011. Fear 3 once again released to mixed reception. While actual critic scores were fairly positive, the fan reaction was much less so. The game has since been regarded as the worst in the series. What is interesting is that unlike the first two games, this one was not developed by Monolith Productions. Instead, development was handled by Day One Studios, with Monolith providing feedback on the game's development. So they were involved with Fear 3 somewhat, but not the primary developers. Which I am confused at, and despite the research I've done, I was not able to find a reason as to why Monolith didn't develop Fear 3. Or at least why they weren't the primary developers. Like, they made the first two games, and you allowed them to have quite a lot of influence on Day One Studios when they were making Fear 3, so why not just have them develop it? Were Monolith busy or something? I don't know, but there seems to be no answer. Either way, Fear 3 is not looked back upon too friendly, and I want to discuss why. So, without further ado, here's Fear 3, or Threea as it likes to call itself. Alright, so the game starts off with a cutscene, which briefly recaps the first two games. Then there is a random vision of Alma singing with a doll, before then cutting to the opening credits. It should be mentioned that Fear 3 takes place around 9 months after the first two games. The game opens up with the point man from the first game being interrogated. I'll talk more about him later. Either way, Fettel comes and possesses one of the guards to snap the other guard's neck, and then point man breaks free and kills the other guard possessed by his brother Fettel. If he could just break free at any time, why did he wait until now? How did he even get into this situation to begin with? The last time we saw the Point Man was at the end of the first game on the helicopter, and now he's here. Why and how? Anyway, Fedo and Point Man then work together to escape the prison and head to Alma. The story doesn't really get any deeper than that, so let's move on to the gameplay. Fear has always been a gameplay first series, and has always been the main appeal of a Fear game for most audiences. The first Fear was groundbreaking and still contains some of the best first person shooter combat nearly 15 years later. Fear 2 was a downgrade from the original, but still was a lot of fun. How does Fear 3 compare to the previous games as an FPS game and as a sequel? Not too well. Fear 3's gameplay ranges from competent for an FPS game too boring as hell. To start off with, I think the actual shooting mechanics are just fine. Guns feel impactful and there is no issue with aiming, apart from the weird aim sensitivity in this game, and if you have aim assist on, it just goes crazy. The controls are smooth and all that, so there's no issues there. My issues with the game mainly come from its actual design. The weapons are awful. The pistol is pathetically weak and the sound effect is embarrassing. There is a burst fire rifle which can be useful, but it's not as good as the SMG. 
the shotgun is weaker than the SMG, the laser rifle takes too long to kill enemies even if you can chain attacks, the rocket launcher only appears like twice in the game and is used only to take out a heavy assault unit and a helicopter, so that's boring. The sniper is okay I guess, but it's not as good as the previous games. There is only one good weapon in the entire game, which is the Briggs SMG, which is the most powerful and effective gun in every single situation. This causes a major issue with weapon balancing and decision making. In any video game that has guns, there should not be a base level gun that is the best at everything. Reason being that it throws decision making with weapons out of the window. Think back to the original Doom, or even the original Halo, each weapon serves a different purpose in the game, and they each have a clear strength and weakness, so if you want to be effective in combat, then you'll have to be switching up weapons every once in a while. Since the SMG in 3 does everything perfectly, there is no reason to use another weapon in the game, unless you're bored, or you don't have the SMG. The SMG beats the shotgun in close range combat, kills faster than the laser rifle and the burst rifle, and is somehow more effective at taking down helicopters than a minigun on an APC. What? Pretty much the only gun that has an advantage over the SMG is the sniper, but since you're really in long range combat in the game, there is very little reason to switch weapons. To be fair, Fear 2 had this issue with the assault rifle, where it was almost the most effective gun in every encounter. However, just because the previous game suffered from this issue doesn't excuse it still being present in Fear 3. I'd say the problem is worse in Fear 3, because while the assault rifle was the most effective gun in the game, it wasn't the most effective at short range or long range, which makes the shotgun and sniper useful. So there was still a reason to switch weapons in Fear 2, because there were a lot of instances where the assault rifle was not the most useful. Whereas in Fear 3, the SMG is the most effective at literally everything in the game, and this is a big problem. Especially since you can only carry two weapons in the game, in Fear 1, you can carry 3 weapons at once, in Fear 2, you can carry 4 weapons at once, in Fear 3, you can only carry 2. This isn't an issue in of itself, but since you have no reason to use any other weapon apart from the SMG, it means the only purpose of the other weapon slot is in case you run out of ammo, instead of having a separate weapon equipped for a different situation. In the first two games, you would use those slots so that you could have a different type of weapon equipped in case a different situation that provoked it, came up. Here it's just a case of a slot being there for extra ammo. The weapon design and balancing in this game is awful. Next is the enemies which are also tied into level design. Level design and enemy design go hand in hand. If one falters then so will the other. It doesn't matter if you have the best designed enemies in the world if the level design doesn't back that up and vice versa. Now, after watching all of White Light's great videos on the Fear series, and reading Steve Geyer's three guidelines on what makes a good FPS arena, I have come to the conclusion that Fear 3 has mediocre to bad level design. Steve Geyer, who was one of the lead designers in the Fear expansions and Bioshock 2, summed up what makes a good FPS arena with three key points. I'll simplify them a bit, but I'll leave the blog post in the description if you want to read it fully. His guidelines for making a good FPS arena was 1. Varied clustered cover. Cover should be spread out but not spread out evenly, because then it just makes the arena flat and also because it means each piece of cover is meaningful and has its own uses. 2. Circular navigability, which means that there should be multiple flanking routes for the player and enemy. It should encourage the player and enemy to move around and give plenty of options to move around the level, instead of just two sides taking pot shots at each other. The player should be made aware of how they can flank the enemy, and how the enemy can flank them. Observability, which means the use of sight lines. The player should be able to see key features of the arena as they approach it. They should not be able to see every area the enemy can move throughout, but they should be able to get a good idea of the arena environment. This also helps if the player dies and responds at the start of the arena, as they can take a second look at the arena and plan out the next path. Also, planning out where the player starts and leaves the fight is key to blocking the environment. Steve Gear sums it up pretty well, and you can judge the quality of a combat arena in any FPS game based upon these three features. So, how does Fear 3 fare with it? Like I said, mediocre to bad. The opening level of the game has all three of these to a certain extent. There is a varied amount of cover for the player to take, 
and it's not evenly spread out. There are ways for the player to flank the enemy and vice versa, and you also get a good idea of what the arena is like before you enter into combat. The second level in the game also has this as well, apart from the final section of the level, which doesn't have the circular navigability. The third level in the game doesn't have your traditional shootouts, so I'll be fair and I won't apply the three guidelines here, however, this level is bad in its own right. Multiple sections have you hauled out against these crazy guys with crowbars and pipes, some with explosives on their chest. They are not fun to fight because they just keep spawning out of the woodwork, and they just keep randomly jumping up on you with no good warning. The sounds they make don't give you a good idea of where they are, and so they can just come bursting around corners and attack you, and there really isn't any way of you knowing. There is also these knife throwing dudes which do an insane amount of damage and throw knives quickly and are very silent, so oftentimes you can die without knowing what killed you, which doesn't make for a fun, fair or interesting challenge. So this level is still bad in terms of both enemy and level design. The fourth level has barely any of these sidelines, especially observability. The vast majority of the level is just you and the enemies staying behind cover and taking pot shots at each other, which is boring gameplay and doesn't encourage the player to push forward or at least be mobile, and it's just more of the crazy dudes which are poorly designed enemies. So yeah, it's not a good level. Oh yeah, there is also a cover system in the game. It works well enough, but since the game is designed around it, it means that most encounters are stationary and thus don't provoke the player to be mobile. The fifth level also lacks all three guidelines and is mostly just a level full of corridors where you take cover and take pot shots at enemies, or just push down the hallway while holding down the fire button. Observability sucks and you mostly don't get a good idea of the arena you're in. Also, they just throw in more sections with the crazy dudes, which isn't fun. They're really bad enemies, why do they keep shoving them into the game? The sixth level is just you on a bridge and the level design is super linear and restrictive, most of it is spent in an APC, which just makes the game too easy and boring, and all you do is just walk across the bridge. The seventh level is probably the worst. There are some areas which adhere to the three guidelines, but once again, it's mostly just taking cover and taking pot shots, with barely any good sight lines to plan out your next move. Boring design again. And then the eighth level is just a story level with a boss fight. Alright, so out of seven actual levels, two of them are good, and four of them are boring. The issue with the level design in most of the levels not following these three guidelines is that it impacts your engagement with enemies, since the game doesn't encourage you to move around much. Most of your engagements with enemies is just taking pot shots and it's boring. Some of them have varied cover and like one or two of them have good observability, but they lack any reason for the player or enemy to move around, and thus most levels are just boring shooting galleries. Even in the areas that are well designed, the enemies aren't fun to fight, mainly because they aren't as smart as the AI in the first two games, and pretty much all of them can be dispatched easily, so to compensate, the enemies do an extreme amount of damage, which only encourages the player to take cover and be stationary even more. The game does have regenerating health, but it only means that any damage you take in these situations is superficial, and so you can just hide and take cover. Plus, you regenerate really fast, and it's more like a slap on the wrist rather than a punishment. I think Fear 2 had the best health system, you have shields which protect your actual health, and you use medkits to refill your health. It was an improvement upon the first game because in Fear 1, it was almost impossible not to take damage in a firefight, and so using medkits mid-fight was important, which is an issue because it encourages the player to use most of the medkits mid-fight. Fear 2 fixed this by giving a shield over the health, so that you can be more aggressive in combat, but punishment to your health will still be taken if you aren't careful. Fear 3 just says, Nah, let's let the player be as reckless as they want. It gets even worse if you play Fedel. Fear 3 has a co-op mode where the host plays as Pointman and the person joining plays as Fedel. You can play as Fedel solo, but you have to beat Pointman's campaign first for some reason. The levels and cutscenes don't change, but Fedel has telekinesis to lift enemies up. You can shoot these red blast things at enemies, which kills them in one shot if it's a headshot. And Fedel can also possess others, which play pretty much the same as point man but without reflex mode oh yeah i almost forgot to talk about reflex mode because you won't spend most of the game doing anything cool with it you'll mostly just use it to get a better shot on an enemy while hiding behind cover anyway playing as fedel can be fun for a bit but he is insanely overpowered to the point that the game just becomes ridiculously easy and very boring so whether you play as fedel or point man it'll still be boring either way 
I think playing with a friend might make the experience better, but the only friend I have that could play Fear 3 with me is Gordon Zora, and as evil as I am, I'm not evil enough to torture him by making him play this game with me. There is also a leveling system where you can level up by performing certain actions or using bodies for psychic links, which is a cool idea but it breaks the game. First off, just having a text of leveling up appear on the side with a JPEG of Alma breaks the immersion and also the leveling up is permanent. Even if you start a new game, you'll still have everything leveled up from before. It maxes out at 21, which will only take 3 playthroughs. Not to mention that this just makes Fedor even more overpowered, since you can only play as him the second time around, and thus you will already be leveled up a good chunk. This means that a first time playthrough of Fear 3 on Fearless difficulty will always be the hardest, because even on Insane difficulty, which you unlock after playing the game, you will be leveled up so your abilities when playing it will make the game easier. Who thought this was a good idea? There is a multiplayer like the first two games, but a game should be able to stand upon its own single player alone, and Fear 3 doesn't, even if some of the modes are quite fun. Not to mention that nobody plays Fear 3 multiplayer these days and so you can't find a game. The only way you can play it is by convincing your friends to play this game with you, in which case you're a horrible person for getting friends to play this game. I think one compliment I can give the game is that it does have good level variety. Each level has a unique look and feeling. You start off in a prison, then a slum in Brazil, then a shopping centre, then a neighbourhood, then a city, then a bridge, then an airport, and then an underground testing facility. So at least the game never looks samey. But overall, Fear 3's gameplay ranges from competent to bad. The SMG makes all the other weapons obsolete, the enemies are poorly designed, and most of the levels is just the enemy and player taking pot shots at each other, thanks to the bad level design. It's not like there isn't anything good with this game, the first two levels are actually pretty fun, but the rest are just boring as hell and poorly designed. So yeah, Fear 3's gameplay sucks. Fear 3's story is hard to talk about because basically nothing happens the entire game. It's a road trip story but nothing of actual note happens throughout. It's mostly just a series of random events leading to the climax. Pointman and Fedel are trying to reach Alma the entire game and that's basically the entire plot. I think a major issue with this game was making Point Man and Fedel the main characters. For some reason they decided to give Point Man a face. I don't know why. I mean he's still a silent protagonist so what's the point? So tell me, what does it feel like to kill your own brother? Hmm. Can't say I enjoyed it very much. You didn't even bother to question your orders, did you? You just did as you were told. The reason why the Point Man wasn't given an actual name or face in the first game is because the Point Man was supposed to be you. He was just a shell for the player to fill in order to make them feel more immersed. Now showing his face isn't necessarily a bad thing, I mean Gordon Freeman's face is iconic and yet he still works as a silent character, but the issue is that they make Point Man and Fedel main characters which doesn't work since neither of them have any chemistry apart from being brothers, and one of them doesn't even speak, so any scenes with them is very one-sided. When I was ten, Mother reached out to me. We joined minds. She was learning how to escape her containment. Six days later, our friends at Armacan killed her by cutting off her life support systems. These people, these survivors, have also been touched by her. In the first two games, Alma was the main character of the story. Yes, she was the antagonist and you didn't play as her, but the entire plot was built around her and exploring her story. The character you played as was just a framework for the story. Instead, Fear 3 puts the main focus on the brothers and Alma takes a backseat and is now the framework of the story instead of being the main focus. She doesn't even appear much in the game and she's literally the only interesting part of the story in these games. Basically, centering the story around the brothers is a bad idea and is handled very poorly because none of the interactions with them really carry any sort of weight or have any interesting moments where the characters grow. Practically all the dialogue in the cutscenes is just Fedel talking about what happened with him and Point Man as a child, or just stating the objective. 
It's boring dialogue, and it doesn't engage you in whatever's happening in the story. Mother is calling us to her side to witness the moment, to share in the power, and you want to stop her. We have more than one option here, you know. We have to think about things as a family. This is our moment, brother. This is where we must stand together. If you stand against me, well... It's ugly business, killing a sibling, but you know all about that, don't you? Can you do it again? Apart from that, there is not much else I can talk about with the F3 story. Characters from the previous games do make an appearance, but they serve basically no plot relevance and just make the levels and cutscenes a waste of time. So I may as well just skip to the ending where the point man and Fedel make it to the haunted house where they were raised. Throughout the game, there are flashbacks to Fedel and point man as kids being abused by Harlem Wade for the sake of power. It is interesting to see their side of childhood, as we mostly only saw Alma's childhood abuse throughout the first two games. However, the game never explores the theme of child abuse with any depth and it's mostly just there for exposition to keep the plot moving forward. Throughout the game, you are also stalked by the Creep, which is a manifestation of your bad memories of Harlem Wade. It's a boring enemy to fight, it just pops up every once in a while and you shoot it. Anyway, Point Man and Fedel then go around the facility and destroy items which represent memories of Harlem Wade, and then there is a boss fight with the Creep and it sucks. It has four attacks, all of which incite the player to just do the same thing over and over again of moving around the environment, so it gets boring. You shoot it in the face a bunch of times until it dies. Not really a good way to close off the gameplay of FF3. Which then brings us to the last cutscene of the game, in which Alma gives birth and then Point Man is about to shoot the baby because he was given orders to do so, and then Point Man and Fedel fight, and here is where one of two endings happen. Throughout the game, Alma will be choosing a favourite son between Fedel and Point Man, and whoever performs the best during gameplay will lead to one of the endings. Which is a pointless mechanic, because if you're playing solo, then you will be the only one with any combat stats, and so you automatically win. And as said previously, Fedel is hugely unbalanced and way more powerful than the Point Man, so the combat system is in his favour during co-op. Not to mention that since you can't play as Fedel until you beat the game, it means that you will get Point Man's ending first. So what's the point in having two different endings if Point Man's ending is supposed to be the true ending? Either way, Point Man's ending has him shoot Fedel, Alma gives birth and then dies, which is a really poor send-off for the character, and then Point Man raises her son as his own. In Fedel's ending, he possesses Point Man, takes the baby to raise as his own, and then eats Alma. What the fuck? My issue is that both characters have no reason to fight each other, their conflict begins over paper-thin circumstances and thus their fight is unnecessary, and it's just there to give the co-op some kind of importance. If both were planning to raise Alma's son, then why didn't they just tell each other that that was the plan? Then none of this would have happened. Overall, it's just a shit ending. The only event in the entire game of note is Alma giving birth, and it's a terrible cutscene anyway. In the end, ff 3 story is hugely lackluster and poorly written. In conclusion, ff 3 or Thria, is a mediocre at best, terrible at worst game. The gameplay is boring with no strategy on what weapons to use, environments don't encourage much room for the player to move around, and also for the enemies to move around, and thus encounters just feel like a point and click potshot games. Enemies are poorly designed, the story is hugely lackluster and badly written, and it's a disappointing final entry to the series. Apart from Fear Online, which was even worse, Fear 3 was the last Fear game released and will probably be the last ever, unless Warner Brothers decides to reboot the series at some point. I think it's safe to say that the series is dead. In which case, Fear 3 is sent off the series on a whimper. I don't know if I'd say Fear 3 is a horrible game. I mean, there are some levels that are genuinely terrible, but the game is competent enough in terms of mechanics that I can't say the game itself is terrible, it just has a lot of terrible stuff in it. I mean it's still a poorly designed game and is like I said mediocre at best, 
but I have played much worse games than FF3, even worse FPS games. That doesn't mean FF3 is automatically good, simply because it's better than shit. I mean, FF3 is still pretty bad, it's just not an awful game like most people say it is. I didn't have much fun with it, however, and it's definitely the worst in the series. So in the end, FF3 is a bad game, and I really don't recommend it. Even if you are just here for the story, the story is handled poorly, and nothing really happens anyway. So I'd say skip this one.